A larger existential question is also out there, though, for the dollar. Persistent and rising tensions with China, leading to more questions about whether the dollar is going to lose its reserve currency status. It's a longer-term issue that smart investors have been warning on for a long time. Ray Dalio, for instance, continues to highlight this risk, just warning today in an interview of a capital war between the U.S. and China. Also, keep in mind, everybody's been betting against the dollar. Dollar short positions in the futures market are at their highest level we've seen in two years. Last time that happened, the dollar quickly snapped back higher. So watch out if you're piling into this trade. The Fed's going to be a key test on Wednesday. If there's a hint of more aggressive action from the Fed because of the weakness in the economy, the weak dollar could keep weakening. Ultimately, what that means for stocks is that if you're invested in a company that does business abroad, this is a huge competitive advantage, Paul Hickey, where we've seen a lot of the international stocks or the stocks in the U.S. that do business abroad do, do particularly well because of this tailwind. When, when do you think we'll start to see that show up in earnings and what kind of companies would you be buying? Well, so I think to your point, um, you know, we break the S&P 500 into companies which generate uh, more than half of their revenues outside of the U.S., internationals, we call them, and companies that generate 90 percent or more of their revenues inside the U.S., domestics. So this chart we're showing right here now is the relative strength of the domestics versus the internationals and, as, and then versus the U.S. dollar index. And what you can see here is, especially in the last few months, there's been a clear correlation of these domestics underperforming uh, the, the internationals by a wide margin as the dollars decline. So what you want to focus on is companies with more international exposure. And what you tend to see, sectors that have that exposure, you see, you see it in industrials, you see it in energy, uh, you, you see, also see it in technology. So those are sectors that have been benefiting and will continue to benefit, even consumer staples to a degree. The biggest consumer staples, staples companies have a lot of exposure outside the United States. So I think and outside of that period, just in March, where the, where the dollar index went crazy uh, to the upside, their correlation for the last year and over time has been very consistent. So if you do think the dollar is going to continue to see some weakness, uh, which we do, although not to the same degree that we've been seeing over the last week, you want to focus with, on these companies with uh, more international exposure. And some of those companies are that you have are Google or Alphabet. You have you have uh, even Citigroup is is a bank w which has a lot of exposure mm -hmm. outside mm -hmm. of the United States. So uh, it's something to be aware of when you're picking your individual companies and try to focus on companies with more of an international. Uh, outlook and exposure, especially during these times. Just more broadly, Mike, uh, stepping away from individual stocks, but uh, if we did see a more risk-off environment again and, and uh, equities pull back in a meaningful sense, do you think that would likely trigger a dollar rally again in, in the same way that it did in, in sort of late March, as it were, or mid-March? Uh, I do. Or do, you, or do you think we've moved away from that? No, I think that's correct. I mean, I think that's the main uh, thing to look out for in terms of, uh, aside from just oversold conditions and sentiment getting a little bit too one-sided on the dollar is, yes, it would probably take some kind of a scare in the global markets to get uh, an equity, I mean, a dollar rally going. And then it becomes a test for the other asset classes that have been moving to see if that's all that's been going mm -hmm. on. Of course, a big factor has been the euro as well in this move, which Absolutely. makes up so much yeah. of the DXY. And there's been some positive political developments back in, in Europe, too. Uh, moving on, shares of Moderna higher today. The company received another $472 million in funding from its contract with the Biomedical Advanced Research and Development Authority. Plus, Moderna announcing it's starting phase three trials of its uh, COVID-19 uh, vaccine uh, up 9% uh, or so today. And, and Mike, uh, again, another factor when we get this type of news that that helps uh, futures markets uh, in the mornings and, and can help set the tone for the day. But today, obviously, we've built on that tone throughout. Right. I don't think if you looked at the internals of today's market, it's really trading as if the investors are pulling forward their estimates of exactly when we get a vaccine or get out of shutdowns or anything like that. But it's one of those things that's a reminder, perhaps, for people not to get too negative, that within perhaps the 6 to 10 to 12 month typical time horizon of of the equity markets that there is likely to be progress along this front because there's so much being thrown at it. So, um, you know, I think there could be, you could have it two ways and say, yes, it's a net positive, but nobody really thinks that we're getting to a game changer uh, immediately on this front.